Hey, good evening fellow Groove Riders, Will from Wheels Electrical Services, also known as the Midfield General. In tonight's episode, what I want to do is I just want to give you a quick tour of a few handouts that I, was, that I use on a regular basis. Sometimes I use for my quotations, sometimes I use for my report, sometimes just for general advice for, for uh, customers and even, even some uh, other colleagues and all that, you know, some of the other things. And I think these are absolutely priceless. And as I said before, you don't really see lots of people promoting this, even though they are like, uh, even this company, this is the Electrical Safety First, they do actually, they are actually governed by every every um, every accreditation, like I've seen NAPITS in there, I've seen uh, the NIC are in there, there's there's all sorts, the ECA, there's there's lots of others, you know, other private companies that do it, I think the British Gas has to do with it as well. So they all collate it together and all join together. And I must say, and I'll take me out of to them, E5, Paul Meenham, he always posts about some of their stuff on, uh, on uh, Instagram, and I'll take me out off to him for that because I think it's brilliant. And some of this is priceless. And even if you're an electrician or even if you're an apprentice, some of this information is absolutely priceless. I know it's going to be a bit of a tough watch, this one, because it is a bit booky, but what I'll do is I'll try and take the best bits off because I don't want to tell you too much because basically you can download this as an app on your phone. I did actually show it on another video, chee -chee, up there of uh, where I've done it. And it, it, you can download it as an app, but what we do is we usually just, like I've never ever printed these off, So and I've got to be honest, there's a couple of them that I've not even ever to look at, but I'll go through each one, not only quickly because I want to keep the video down because I want to get home and all that, and I'll go around and I'll do the best bits of each one, but before we start if you could do us a massive favor if you could like subscribe and turn the notification bell it helps the channel grow and also uh, on Fridays like uh, I'm gonna go back tomorrow and I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do a go through a few comments and maybe answer a few comments and also there's a couple of things I want to chat to about this week because they've announced that they're gonna do the new apprenticeship scheme for uh, the new domestic gold card and, I, and as a gold card member would you say I don't know what I am you know holder I suppose I, I, I just want to give my opinion on that because obviously you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm a bit excited about that but we, we press on and I think this first one is number one and this is replacing uh, uh, replacing and consuming it in the domestic and the similar premises I must admit I'm badly dyslexic so if I read anything out wrong plus and all I noticed on a few of my recent videos it is all freezing in here I bought a little like uh, oil radiator that I'm going to put in front of me because it's absolutely freezing but just bear with us so good thing is with this is that if you're changing the fuse board and all that I'd always put this on the quote there's a, there is quite a good few things in here obviously like to do a risk assessment um you know, it also gives you a method of changing it and all that, and obviously about the bonding, the do's and don'ts, what you can do. And I think that's priceless to give to customers when you're quoting for that. This next one's a really good one. I mentioned this on one of my other videos the other night of uh, where I was showing off about the wand. Cha ching I'll post, post that one up there. The guidance of management of electrical safety of safe isolation processes and low, vo low voltage insulation. I have to have this as, uh, as a part of my documents for the uh, approved contractor status and all that. This is one of the things, and plus and all, this is half the reason I've got my assessment tomorrow. I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, I'm gonna show ja Jackie Boy. I think he might even watch this, so hello Jackie Boy. This would be a bit weird, wouldn't it, boy? Right, um, and this is the next one. This is this is enough one that I've not really got into and I've not looked, but I'm gonna, I am gonna read it, and that is uh, connecting micro generation systems to domestic and similar installation. This is pretty good because what I like about this is a bit I don't really understand is like, I've done bits and bobs of it, you know, I've done a lot of commercial electric EV chargers, even though that's not really what it's about. This is more about battery backups, battery storage, solar and all that. And what it has got in there is a highlight reel of that one is that it explains the different types of RCD that you need. And that's pretty good. So that's, that's one of the that is one of the positives I see at that one. This one got best guidance for. Obviously, you're always going to see this one with me. I absolutely love this. Uh, electrical insulation report condition reporting classification codes for domestic and elect similar electrical insulation. I hand that out with every report. It is so vital and so important. And this shit is free, man. You know what I mean? It's like 
it, and, and it is so handy. Even someone like myself who's quite experienced and all that, it's just, it's just priceless. It's absolutely great. Next one we look at is uh, Best Practice Guide 5. The electrical insulation and their impact on fire performance of domestic premises used as a single family houses. Never looked at this one, to be honest. Most of them are all covered by what you see, but one of the highlight reels, and there is quite a lot to this, and this is another vital one that I'm gonna take on board and I'm gonna look at, is that it explains all the different types of downlights. And also, it's also got about all the joists, all the different type of joists, eye joists and all that, you know, and all the fire regulations, because that's another thing that's massively changed that you don't really know much about. But we always tend to you tend to use the Aurora downlights and uh, they always send me all the uh, leaflets and all that through. I don't know why, like, they're, they're actually local to us as well. So, it's, you know, so I'd always support a local company as well. But like, uh, the ones we actually use have been tested, so I know that they're okay with all the types of joists. So I'm not over concerned, even though I use Canon lamps, but that'd be something I'll be covering in the future, all the materials and all that. This is another good one, which I've got to read, which I've not really looked at that. I'd, it's always a bit of a, um, uh, this, sorry, this is the best practice guide six, portable and statutory, statutory appliance testing in private rented accommodation. See, this pack testing is such a gray area, you know, I'm going to give that a little read and all, because even Graham, like, who does my pack testing and all that, he always says to me that it's not actually needed and stuff like that, and, but, it's horses for courses, isn't it? You know, I might even uh, like uh, mention it to uh, to my NRC assessor tomorrow and see what his opinion is with that because it's always crossed. Even though we, you know, some customers do it and some don't. And to be honest, you know, we've been doing a lot, but I think I think it's all to do with whether they're providing their own appliances or whether they supply them. And a lot of our customers have got long, you know, don't supply the white goods and all that. This is the best practice, guy seven. Test instruments for electrical insulation, accuracy and consi um, consistency. And that is obviously, I've also covered that with a cow card. That's basically what it is. It just shows your methods. It keeps your readings and all that. You know, it's quite interesting. You know, all the, all the equipment that you need. You know, that's obviously quite important. This is another good one, is selection and use of plug-in socket outlet test devices. So obviously this is going back to, you know, like the plug-in testers and all that. I've done a video of that, but obviously that's just to show like uh, polarity and all that. And that's just telling you yeah, that you need to use like a earth loop impedance tester or, or, you know, stuff like that. It's quite interesting, well worth having a read. You know, that's guidance note eight. This is nine, safe installation of retrofit LED lamps, you know, which I don't know what, what that's gonna have in it, but that's gonna be a hell of a read, that one, isn't it? That's gonna be well intriguing. Right, we move on with that. I don't know what you're really gonna get out with that. Obviously, it's probably got to do with the drivers and all stuff like that. That's just a quick run through these. These, these other bits are, are proper decent, these are, and I've, I've not seen these ones before. And this is a guidance for installers when making connections in a consumer unit, which I've never ever seen that before. And like just a quick brief of it, it's brilliant. It's got all about the tails. It's even got, I will put images, you probably noticed already, I'll probably put in images as we go along of that. It's even got the correct way of bending over cables, even though I've never do that, I, I'm, I don't agree with it. But hey ho, horses for courses, even where you put the termination underneath the termination clamp and stuff like that. It's even got a description of telling you all the different components in a split load consumer unit. You know, and it's it's really good. I've never ever seen this one before, and it's and I think it's handy. You know, especially if you're an apprentice and you've never seen this. You know, it's pretty good. Another one I've never seen, and uh, and that's a m uh, minimum provision of electrical socket outlets in a house. And obviously, this I do cover this one because if I notice in a the house there's a lot of extension leads and all that in uh, code breakers, there's a part in there for that, for excessive, because like, you know, what we usually tend to find is that you've got a lot of people with utilities and they're running extension lead, they have fridge, freezers and all that, you know, like adding it all up will easily go over that. And, and that is a lot covered in this. And what a good thing is, is that it's in black and white as well, because we have had a few where we've, we've you know, it backs you up for the amount of sockets that you should have per room and all that. And it's like, you know, this is government guidance and it does say, you know, it's really good. It's even got like, uh, 
like electric you know vehicle charging it's got all the different rooms broken down it's very impressive and very handy so you know obviously if you've got a customer who's got loads of extension leads and landlords and all that and he's not having it then attach that and i just think that is a cracking little handout and this as i as i keep saying this stuff is free obviously you don't have to print it out but i want to give it the absolute large one to the assessor tomorrow when he comes in and try and impress him right it's just enough a quick video I hope you like, I hope you can subscribe, I hope you can comment. I don't get any comments, so it'd be nice to get a couple of comments because I, I want to actually do an episode of all that. Maybe next week I'm going to go back to doing uh, the reviewing some of the materials that I use and all that because at the end of the day, I'm an electrician TV and even though all I want to do is revo review tools, I've got to mix it up a little bit. I hope you've liked it. I hope you got sank out of it. And if you're going to be anything this week, then be electric up the old village. You know, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.